England have officially qualified. Tonight's game will decide where they finish in the group and Scotland need to win tonight against Croatia to have any chance of qualifying. So let's get the lowdown on all of those games and what might happen in the next round. For the next two hours, we're joined by former England winner and star of the 2002 World Cup, Trevor Sinclair. Hello, Trev. Good morning. Laura. Good morning. Morning. Thanks morning, Thanks for Darren. joining us. Thanks for pulling up a, t- a chair at the table for breakfast this morning with me and Darren. It's lovely to have you on. It always is, actually. It's always a, a bit of a surprise when you're on breakfast, isn't it? Well, apart from a Friday with um, <laughs> Alan, Alan, Alan and uh, Ray. Yeah, yeah but I uh... sleep in on those days, so officially they don't really exist. In the, <laughs> the throat is sounding a little bit hoarse this morning. Jeremy. I know, it's just, I don't know where that's come from. It's just started this morning, unfortunately. Right, um, there's loads to talk about this morning. We'll get to the Harry Kane stuff later on. What your thoughts on that one as well, um, being a City man yourself. Yeah. Um, but why don't we start with England, with Scotland, with the way things are going to go tonight. Two big games, really. I suppose for England, how already qualified Trev is it is it a chance to rotate this side or do you think that Gareth needs to try and keep some consistency now um it's a difficult one because you think you look at Harry Maguire especially um you'd like to think if we're going to do well he needs to be involved in the in the starting lineup so this would be a great opportunity to give him some game time we don't know how fit he is you know he's been out what for three or four weeks five weeks it's not a huge amount of time, but if you want to um, start playing him now, I think this is the kind of last time you can play him without losing the rest of the lads. Because the rest of the lads are, you know, they're working hard, they're training week in, week out with the England squad, they're playing games, they're getting results, they've not conceded. Um, Tyrone Mings has done superb, not really put a foot wrong defensively. So you would have to say it's, it's difficult to change that partnership. But if you're going to change it, change it now where it's a game where it doesn't mean as much. So. I think Harry Maguire going in there would be a good opportunity to change that. And I actually think Harry Kane as well. I think he looks fatigued, not just physically. Um, he's, 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 he's looked like he's a bit leggy, but also mentally. And I think you look at what's going on with, you know, a little bit of speculation, mm-hmm. that never helps. So, yeah, I think there's a, there's a good opportunity for me, for Gareth to change a few bodies around and, and give a few opportunities out, especially for positions where... I, you know, offensively, we've not really created that many chances. Mm. So why not give some of the players a, a good opportunity where it's a game where, listen, it's a it's a big test against the Czech Republic because I really rate their uh, performances in this tournament. But also, it doesn't mean as much. And actually, if we finish second, it's not it's not a terrible thing. No, it's not, is it? That's not at all. And when you talk about obviously putting Harry Maguire in, of course, it, it seems like everybody wants him to be in that on in the team sheet. But as you said there, you're right in terms of losing players because Tyrone Mings for me, out of the two centre centre-halves, him and Stones, has probably been the better of the two. We'd have to say Tyrone Mings has done very very well. But for whatever reason, if you, if you ask most people, they're going to say, yeah, Ming's out, Maguire in. Now, I think that'd be harsh on, on Tyrone Ming, really harsh. It will be, Darren. And as, again, you know, you talk about that emotional connection and that relationship you you form with players. And you if you start moving that around, Tyrone Ming's been superb. You know, he loves attacking that first ball, which at times John Stone doesn't really want to get involved. He will do if it's in his vicinity, but he doesn't naturally he doesn't he, he wants to take that down on the chest or he wants to let the centre forward have it and then deal with the yeah. next phase and just delay. Whereas Tyron Tyron means he wants to get he wants <laughs> yeah. to, he's, 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 listen he, he's a he's a former non league player. So he wants to get involved. He wants to let his physical presence be felt by the, the centre forward. And yeah, you need that in a in a in a defensive partnership. So I think he's doing that real listen, Harry Maguire does that as well. But I think just the fact that he's left-footed when the ball comes from right to left and he opens, it just makes the pitch a lot bigger and it gives him lots more options. So it could affect the defensive line in uh, possession when we have the ball a little bit if he if he does get dropped from the team. Mm. Uh, would you get Bellingham in there? It's a tough one, Laura. I think he, he has shown his worth. I think in the quarterfinals against Manchester City, he's shown how mature he was. So I think he can deal with the situation. I just think Declan, what Declan Rice has done this season at West Ham, um, I think what Phillips done in the first game and, and what he's brought with his experience, I think his time will come, Bellingham. It's, it, I think it's very important that he's involved in the squad. And if there is an injury, I wouldn't hesitate to put him in. But I just feel putting him in unnecessarily and dropping one of them two, not, I, I, I just don't think it's the right thing to do. What about not dropping one of those two and bringing him in for Mason Mount if he misses it because of COVID? Do you think... Do you, do you think he's got enough in that more forward role to, to, to create? Um, I, I would say there's 
probably better options. I think you could put a Grealish in there, you know, especially if, when you're looking at the chances that we've created. And we've not, we've not created that many, but when you look at the chances that we have created, I think Raheem Sterling has been involved in a lot of it. Even though, you know, he's, he's not been brilliant. Um, he's scored the goal that we've scored. He's made movement in behind, which is always upsets the defensive line. And because of the pace that he's got, he's always a threat. I think yeah. the, in the, when you think about a defensive line, if you think about a defensive line playing against a team without Raheem Sterling, we're 10 yards further up the pitch. Yeah, so all, up. Of sudden, so all of a sudden, the, our team haven't got as much space to get our little passages of play and to build through the lines. Whereas if Raheem Sterling's in the team and he's on that, that fullback, you're 10 yards further, further back and all of a sudden everyone can get them little passages of play, little patterns of play going and then you're into the final third and you're probing. So I think you, you could you could play um, Bellingham but I think you've got other players that could play in that position. Do you still see the need, as you said, there to play Phillips and Rice? Because you'd, no. have, to, you'd, have, to, you'd have to say... Certainly in this tournament, yeah, Declan Rice has not done an awful lot wrong, but you'd have to probably say Calvin Phillips has been slightly better. But I still don't feel the need that you need them two players in there, per se. I think, you know, you, there's an argument to say that um, against Croatia, even though it's a Croatia that are not as strong as they were maybe four or five years ago, um, or even three years ago, there's an argument to say that, yeah, you want to play a two in there. But I think when you're talking about Scotland and when you're talking about Czech Republic, without being disrespectful, I think we're the ones that should be bossing possession. Yeah. So is it necessary to have two in there? Especially, and listen, it depends what fullbacks you play. If you're going to play fullbacks, if, you, if you're going to play uh, Ben Chilwell on the left as, as a left back and say, get yourself forward of a four, then maybe you can say, yeah, all right, we'll have two there and we'll have the two central defenders mm-hmm. holding. You've got four players there. But if you're going to start playing... Um, different, like Trippier, who, mm-hmm. who, who can get forward, but he's a great defender, and Kyle, and Kyle Walker, then I think there's an argument to say we should be playing maybe one in there and have that kind of Barcelona freeway. You've got the, 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 the four who comes back and becomes a, a third centre-half. 